The Chicago Cubs are one of the most popular teams in baseball. Over their long history, the Cubs have held some devoted fans, star players, and great seasons. But despite this, any sparks of success this franchise has put together have all ended in failure. Untimely collapses and horrible seasons, all rooting back to a single curse. A curse that happened on one day in history, one day when one animal tried to enter one stadium to watch a game. One encounter which soon led to the longest championship drought in American sports history. The Chicago Cubs are a cursed franchise, and it's all because of one thing. A billy goat. It's been over 150 years since the Cubs were established, so let's quickly head all the way back to 1876. Yup, I bet everyone gets hyped when they hear 1876. Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone, Colorado is a new state, and America is officially 100 years old. Also in this year, a baseball league called the NAP BBP was founded with 8 original members. Chicago was one of them, except they weren't actually called the Cubs, instead, the White Stockings. The club would soon become one of the National League's earliest powerhouses. In 1902, the Chicago Daily News nicknamed their team the Cubs, since they had a bunch of young athletes. Some of those athletes included the very thrilling trio of Chance, Evers, and Tinker, who even set an MLB record in 1906 by winning 116 games. Even though their crosstown rivals beat him that year, the Cubs would two-peat in 1907 and 8, thanks in part to Merkel's boner. So yeah, all was pretty good in the Windy City. But folks, we just reached the good. All that's left is the bad, the worst, and the ugly. Black cats, goats, and whatever other farm animals you could think of are going to curse this team over the next hundred years. Players and animals and even fans are gonna take the blame. That too, Pete, just happened to be the peak of the Chicago Cubs. After that, the longest drought in US sports history occurred. Right now, the Cubs are only in a slump. In 1916, they moved to the north side of Chicago, and built a stadium named after their gum-chewing owner, Bill Wrigley. When his son took ownership, they decided to add ivy walls to the stadium. Today, Wrigley Field is one of the most iconic ballparks of all time. So yeah, that's great and all, but well, let's head inside the diamond. Oh, that's not good. The Cubs can't seem to cash in a World Series. In one World Series game, they blew an 8-0 lead. In another, Babe Ruth called shot to sweep the Cubs. By this point, Chicago had lost their 5th straight World Series. But once they lost World Series number 6, that's when it fell apart. In 1945, the Cubs unexpectedly won the NL pennant with MVP Phil Cavaretta. They faced the Detroit Tigers in the World Series and would quickly get up 2 games to 1. In Game 4, fans came in optimistic, optimistic and hopeful to break their World Series drought. The final four games would be played at Wrigley Field, giving the fans an opportunity to see the Cubs win at their home park. Everyone wanted to watch the game, especially this one guy named William, the Billy Goat Tavern owner. You see, William wanted to bring his pet goat, Murphy, to enjoy the game with him. He even bought a ticket for him. But the encounter at the entrance went something like this. Hey man, I know we all want to see the game, but that pet goat of yours is smelly, man. We gotta ask you to leave. But I paid for two tickets. Murphy's me good luck charm. Nope, sorry, goat's gotta go. Come on, man, let me talk to the owner. Hey Wrigley, I paid my hard-earned money for these tickets, so let me and me go in. You hear? We'll let you in. But not the goat. Why not the goat? Because the goat stinks. Come on, man. What are you, scared of old Murphy? I ain't afraid of no goat. Yeah. 
Okay, I'll go. But remember this. Them Cubs, they ain't gonna win no more. The Cubs will never win a World Series as long as this goat is not allowed in Wrigley Field. Okay, let's go, Murphy. Game 4, loss. Game 5, loss. Game 7, loss. In a simple act of just not letting a goat in, the Chicago Cubs went from some of their winningest decades to the worst stretch in franchise history. After losing the World Series, William the Billy Goat Tavern owner supposedly telegrammed P.K. Wrigley, saying, Who stinks now? In a span of 20 years from the 40s to 60s, the Cubs put up just one winning season. Two of those were franchise worse, with 103 losses. In 1954, former player Phil Cavaretta was even fired after saying the Cubs were unlikely to finish above 500. But, you know, at least he was right though. Chicago were no doubt the lovable losers during the 50s. Despite the curse being in full swing, the Cubs did have one thing to root for during this time. That was Mr. Cub himself, Ernie Banks. Banks ended up winning two MVPs, smacking over 500 home runs, and played very impressively in the infield. During the franchise's darkest years, where Chicago couldn't even make a playoff game, Banks was nevertheless one of the most optimistic and lovable players during his time. And he stayed loyal to the Cubs despite their lack of success. Ernie Banks was no doubt the greatest Chicago Cub of all time. Nineteen sixty-nine. I know fans say it every year, but this has got to be the year. They quickly raced to a thirty-six and sixteen start, being led by Ron Santo, Billy Williams, and Fergie Jenkins. Yeah, Chicago was dominating their division until, yup, well, every team's gotta reach a slump, but this one seemed to come at the worst time. On September 9th, in a game against the New York Mets, a black cat just randomly appeared on the field. After this incident, an eight-game losing streak struck on the Cubs. Now, being superstitious, fans usually blame all of their devastating losses on a bunch of bogus. I mean, you can't tell me the reason a multi-million dollar organization was struggling was because of a billy goat. But on this fateful night, when a black cat leaped on the field, fans had no one else to blame. Eight straight losses, missing the playoffs, and one of the biggest collapses in baseball history. Yup, it was that black cat's fault. At this point in Cubs history, fans really started to wonder if they might actually be cursed, especially after the 1969 collapse. So when the opportunity came to lift the curse, the Cubs took it. In 1973, the original Billy Goat Tavern owner's nephew, Sam, brought his goat to Wrigley Field in an attempt to lift the curse. The goat, named Socrates, was a descendant of the original. So for that reason, he was treated like goat royalty. If we're gonna lift that curse, let's go to Wrigley Field in a white limo. Oh, and a red carpet too. Yeah, yeah, and um, have a sign that says, Always Forgiven. Oh, and then the ushers will open the gate and let me and Socrates into Wrigley- Ew, your goat smells. Yup, gotta go. So just like that, the Billy Goat curse was still intact. For the next 11 years, Chicago couldn't even finish above 500. They were still the lovable losers, but everything changed in the 80s. 1977. Philip Wrigley passed away in 77, leaving the Chicago Tribune to buy the Cubs. Straight off the bat, the Tribune were a bit antsy for a World Series. So in 1984, the Cubs assembled a stacked lineup. A lineup that swept their opponents, led by NL MVP Ryan Sandberg and Cy Young winner Rick Sutcliffe. Just for safe measures, they also invited Sam and that darn billy goat onto the field. Finally, the goat stepped onto the field and Sam said the curse is lifted. And it seemed like it finally was. Chicago, they couldn't stop winning, and they won the division title for the first time in 40 years. In the playoffs, the Cubs faced the San Diego Padres. They jumped to a quick 2-0 lead, one game away from the World Series. 
one game, but game three, a blowout. Game four, game losing homer. Game five, this is win or go home. The Cubs controlled most of this game and even led the Padres 3-2 in the bottom of the seventh. The Cubs were just eight outs away from the World Series. In a season where everything seemed to piece together, a goat curse that ruined this franchise 40 years ago was now lifted. Star players who had never reached the playoffs before were now winning. Now here they are, eight outs away from winning the game and the series. Harry Carey, Cubs fans, go grab a drink and celebrate. Let's go to the World Series. Trout's throwing, I believe it's Brewster I got up along with him. Ground ball hit the dirt, right down his legs! Here comes Martinez, we're tied at three! After Leon Durham's error, the Chicago Cubs were still cursed. The Chicago Cubs still had some good lineups, but they always seemed to slump in summertime. In 1989, the Cubs eliminated them in five games. In 94, they began the season with 12 straight home losses. Come the late 90s, two stars emerged in Chicago. One was a rookie, Kerry Wood. Kid K won Rookie of the Year with his great strikeout abilities. The other was the steroid freak you might know as Sammy Sosa. Sosa had been known for being a home run machine, competing in the 1998 Home Run Derby. But all of this excitement only led to being swept by the Braves. However, in 2002, Chicago did get their revenge on the Braves, beating Atlanta in their first series win since 1908. You've waited 95 years, Chicago. It's time to celebrate. The Chicago Cubs advance to the National League Championship Series. Come the new millennia, the Cubs were on a roll. In 2002, they reached the NLCS and jumped to a quick 3-1 lead over the Miami Marlins. Again, one game away from the World Series. Game 6 felt like Chicago had it in the bag. The Cubs now led 3-0, at home, just 5 outs away from winning the series. Pitcher Mark Pryor was on the mound. Chicago had shut down Miami's offense for the first seven innings. Why not just get a couple more outs? This play may seem insignificant. Okay, maybe the Cubs would have gotten the out if that fan, Steve Bartman, didn't interfere. But Miami was still being shut out, down 3-zip. But out of nowhere, after this play, the momentum had entirely shifted. It started with a walk, then the bases got loaded. Soon, Miami scored 8 straight runs. In a domino effect, the Marlins won Game 6, then Game 7, and with that, the series. The Chicago Cubs collapsed yet again and were now eliminated. But fans were sick of blaming everything on that same old billy goat. The scapegoat for this collapse was Steve Bartman. Steve Bartman was an Illinois native who was a huge fan of the Cubs. He was simply a fan who did what any other fan would do, catch a foul ball. He just didn't know that that foul ball he grabbed might have been the most influential in baseball history. A camera zoomed on Bartman later, showing him crying. Overnight, he went from just another Cubs fan to the biggest enemy in Chicago. With his life now ruined, Steve Bartman completely dropped off the face of the earth. At this point, the Cubs had tried all they could to reverse the curse, but nothing seemed to work. In 2007 and 8, Chicago played red hot, winning the division crown twice. But both times came to a screeching halt when they were swept by the D-backs and then the Dodgers. Things soon fell apart at the front office. The Chicago Tribune went bankrupt, so the Ricketts family bought them in 2009. Some new additions included Jed Hoyer at general manager and Theo Epstein as team president. Under almost completely new management, the Cubs expected a decline in production and a long rebuild come the 2010s. 
but Chicago's young players began to flourish in 2015. Despite being swept in the NLCS, they showed hope coming into next year. And instead of collapsing like what they'd done for the last 100 years, Chicago played even better. In 2016, they had a strong pitching game led by Jake Arrieta. NL MVP Chris Bryant and Anthony Rizzo sparked the offense, and the Cubs easily ran away from the NL Central with 103 wins. 103 wins were their most since 1910, and Chicago was easily the best team in baseball. After falling two games to one versus the Dodgers, the Cubs rallied in the next three games, not stopping for anything. They finally closed out a playoff game at Wrigley Field and were headed to the World Series for the first time since 1945. However, Chicago's start to the World Series definitely wasn't promising. They quickly got down three games to one against the Cleveland Indians, and the next couple games would be played in Cleveland. But despite the deficit, momentum had shifted, and this time, it was in Chicago's favor. With winning the World Series in 2016, the 108-year championship drought and that stupid Billy Goat curse was now over. Who knows if the Cubs will be cursed again? Maybe another black cat will jump on the field. Or Steve Bartman might come back to Wrigley Field and the guards will reject him, forcing another curse on the Cubs. But for this moment in history, the Chicago Cubs were champions. But that World Series doesn't take away from the sad history this team has compiled. From not allowing a Billy Goat in a Wrigley Field, the Cubs had to endure long droughts, disappointing collapses, and a curse that lasted over 70 years. There's no other way to describe the Chicago Cubs but cursed. <laughs>